something that I wanted to ask you about because I, you know, obviously I know your background and you know how you apply faith in your own role. Um, but I'm curious, 84% of people worldwide identify to be in some kind of organized religion. So, you know, I, I talk to sellers and leaders all the time, but faith isn't a topic that comes up a lot. And I think, you know, it falls into that old, you know, don't talk about politics and religion. And by no means am I condoning necessarily talking about it in the workplace if that's not a, an area of comfort. That said, um, I'm interested from your vantage point, um, faith is obviously a part of a lot of the people's lives that we work with and that I work with and that you work with. And, and I, I know you talk to um, parents who are people like me that, um, you know, have a have a career, um, probably come to you for, you know, struggling with some type of, um, you know, philosophical struggle or, you know, what's the right way of doing this? I mean, there's a lot of implications, how to act with integrity, um, you know, how to make sure that you are an empathetic leader. Um, and I mean, just the very impetus of some of the discipleship groups that I've been uh, privileged to be in has been how to be more of a servant leader. So I'm curious, what themes do you see most uh, predominantly from a kind of a faith-based journey translating into the business world? Um, but also, what do you think people are, are struggling with most right now in from a career perspective that could be addressed with faith? Well, I, I think all of us, not only has COVID changed our lives, but I, I'd even say pre-COVID or even during COVID, both, both and, is I think stress, you see anxiety, just even simple of worry, lack of peace. A lot of us go from, whether you have kids or not, uh, you, you go from thing to thing to thing to thing. And um, I, I feel a lot of us, myself included at times, we're just trying to tread water. And can I survive till Monday? Can I survive till the weekend? Can I survive till the spring vac you know, vacation? Can, can I survive till the Christmas break or whatever that is? And, um, you know, I don't know. I sometimes get the perception that a lot of people just, we're just not enjoying life. Or we're living for the weekend or for the moment. And so the focus then turns onto, okay, I just want to have fun. I just want to have fun. And so, hey, I'm only having fun when I'm down at the lake on the boat, you know, having my Bud Light. Or I'm um, only having fun when I'm watching my son play basketball. And when we regulate, I think, our lives that way, it's like a black and white either, you know, it, 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 to me, it needs to be a both and. Now, I'll admit, everybody, um, and, and not every moment of my 15-year career, have I had passion, joy, and excitement for the work I've been doing. But I think a lot of it starts with perspective and attitude. And at the end of the day, um, I, you know, you talked about serving. I think when your goal is to be the best version of yourself, to try to help and assist others, that's going to go further than, hey, I'm just trying to get ahead. I'm just trying to make this happen. Um, I got this project I don't like, but I'm just, you know, and, and so I see it as like, you know, I could do a deep dive into like, uh, you know, the Apostle Paul and, and stuff like that. But, you know, if, if you want to sometimes look up Colossians chapter three, but I'd focus on stuff like, you know, when you, when you serving a, a higher being, in, in, in my case, the triune God, but you're, you're, you're serving someone else besides yourself and your goal is to um, do that well, I think that really can carry, carry you further, knowing that your peace is, is going to come there opposed to just solely in your work. Um, I don't know if uh, a lot of people have spent time, I assume they have, with Enneagram. I'm a three. I'm an achiever. Um, I could do a whole deep dive on my uh, psyche and everything. I'll spare you guys. But my my success and, and my a lot of times satisfaction and self-worth comes from achieving things. And I've even had to discipline myself and learn that, you know what? I've got to find peace and joy, um, which which I do find in my faith, but also in my life day in and day out, because it, otherwise it's just not enough for me. I just can't work a job to work a job or I can't just live for the weekend or whatever that is and just go from thing to thing to thing. I've got to have a little bit more stability in my life. And so I, I really encourage people to, to, to sort, you know, focus more on that bigger picture than that day in and day out. I mean, that's why we call it a job. There's moments that you're just not going to like. That's why it's not called play <laughs> is what I, you know, tease students and adults and things like that. So, yeah. Love that. Um, 
you're so right. And I think there's different levels between thriving, surviving, treading water and, and drowning, unfortunately. Um, and, and I talked about the seasons. You know, I know when it's summer, um, each July, historically, I've been at home at my own house, sleeping in my own bed on average five to maybe 12 nights. Mm -hmm. So I know that's going to be very intense. That's going to be 24 hour, you know, you're, you know, I'm on the clock seven days, eight days, maybe 10 day trip. And I know I'm on the clock and I know that there's certain aspects of that that just drain me. But then I also know there's going to be another season when the school year and I'm going to pivot and turn. And so part of it's just mentally preparing myself to say, okay, there's certain aspects of this that are going to be challenging and hard and it's for a season or it's for a month or it's for this. And I know that going in and then I can mentally um, kind of stabilize myself. And I find that helpful. Yeah. And, and like you said, perspective and attitude is, is at the heart of everything. You know, there, you know, and what I love about what you said too, the, you know, the, the kind of the lead in was about faith, but at the same time, a lot of faith and it doesn't matter what elements of faith you have. I think a lot of it is acknowledgement that we are a, a faithful people. Um, most people identify with some form of organized religion. And so a lot of that is just being mindful and being able to live in the moment and, and apply some of those principles to how you live your life, how you treat people, how you treat yourself. And I think that's where a lot of folks didn't necessarily look in this in this era was, you know, I've got to be very patient with myself. Um, and, and the other part, too, is you, you mentioned that there's not always a, a, a piece inherently that comes out of doing your work. Um, you know, I've been personally, I've been in roles, I've started roles where I was completely overwhelmed. Um, there's definitely days that I get up and I'm not necessarily feeling doing something that looks almost exactly the same as what I did yesterday and the 365 days before it um, because of this switch to remote work. And, you know, I, I've seen the memes, it's Groundhog Day again. Um, there is a there's a level of discipline that we have to take to to our lives now that wasn't necessarily there before. And I think what what faith has helped me with is that ability to slow it down and, and think in the moment, be more conversational as I pray or as I reflect on how I want to spend my time and finding the joy in moments. Um, you know, try to take things in bite sized chunks. Um, you know, I talk sometimes about a, a, a hiking trip that I went on with my father-in-law and brother-in-law a few years back. And I mean, some of the some of the views, once I got to where I was going, I'd look back and I'm like, I, I don't know how in the world I got here. Like, that's yeah. terrifying. But I focused on landing the step. And I think if we focus more on landing the step and making sure that we achieve what's right in front of us, instead of thinking about all of the hypotheticals that are out here, um, we have a lot better probability of doing it and doing it effectively and learning from it and living in it. The other thing too is infusing your own passions into what you do. You know, I started a role in the company that I'm in today seven years ago and it was a new industry for me and I was extremely overwhelmed. I mean, I'm, you know, you've got people that are of a different generation than I was at the time that were talking about things and seemed a lot, it made me feel like I was the dumbest guy in the room. And, yeah. uh, but I knew the skill set that I brought to the table and I knew what I was good at and I knew what I enjoyed. And so I looked for ways to infuse that into what I did. And lo and behold, we found some success over time um, by doing that and investing. But it's a moment by moment thing. And I, I think that's the that's the, the critical component is you can't look at anything and, and take a broad stroke like a job or your life and just say, you know, I'm not having any fun. I can only have fun when I do X, Y, Z, like you were saying before. Yeah. You've got to figure out ways to infuse your your things you're passionate about into the moment. And sometimes that can just be your faith. If you're passionate about your faith or you want to be more passionate about your faith, look for more ways to apply that lens into those daily moments that you're struggling with. No, I, I, I totally agree. You know, your, 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 your marriage, your family, your job, your car, you're driving, whatever may not be what you want it to have or, or be, but you can have that relationship with, uh, with your faith and exercise, you said the word disciplines, you know, maybe it's 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 scripture reading or it's prayer or it's meditation or it's something else. And you can have those moments. No one can take those from you. Um, one other aspect.